Hi, I'm Heather from Handbook Tunes, and today is my top five books of May. In May, I read 27 books. I DNF four of them. Of the 23 books that I finished, I had eight five stars, and I'm going to talk about the top five. The first one that I want to talk about is The Duke Who Didn't by Courtney Milan. This is the first in the Wedgford trial series. This is a historical romance with a half Chinese duke and a main character who I believe is fully Chinese but has been living in England either for all or or most of her life. Our main character is very type A, very list oriented, takes things very seriously, is constantly trying to achieve perfection, and really strongly cares for everyone around her. The Duke is uh, the owner of the town that she lives in, but nobody knows that he's the Duke, and he has been coming since he was a boy, escaping to the Wedgford Trials. This is a festival slash game competition, and is a big deal. The main character's father was cheated out of a sauce recipe by two Englishmen many years ago, and they sold his recipe and got rich off of it, and he got nothing. He has perfected a new sauce and is trying to make a go of it at the Wedgford Trials. She is very invested in this and in the success of it and it has a lot to do. The Duke has not come to the trials for the last three years because she told him to get serious <laughs> and so he's been attempting to do that and she's mad at him that he hasn't been there in three years and he is desperately in love with her, wants to make her his wife, and doesn't think that she will understand that if he proposes to her, that she will just think he's being silly. And also, he has to deal with, obviously, quite a bit of racism amongst the gentry and the nobility with his half Chinese parentage, and doesn't really want to force that on her. I loved this book. There were so many things that I thought were going to go one way, which is not my favorite, and then went another way, and I loved them. There was humor, there was a very, very sweet romance between the two of them, and I also really enjoyed the side characters and the overall storyline and themes. I laughed until I cried at the morning after <laughs> scene, and there were so many things that I don't want to spoil for you that I just absolutely loved the direction that she went with them. It's a very sweet romance that takes place basically over the course of a week, but between two people who have known each other for years, and I adored it. Next, I want to talk about Hot as Hades by Alicia Ray. This is a novella that is a Hades and Persephone retelling. It is the literal god and goddess, and it starts with the naked goddess Persephone, or Persephone, <laughs> falling in Hades' lap. And he do can't trust her, but he's attracted to her. He's so grumpy, and she's pure sunshine. It was a very fun dynamic. I loved the way that she took the elements of the original myth, but honestly made them more tolerable. <laughs> a lot of times I don't love Demeter's, is that how you say her name? Persephone's mother. I don't love her role in it, obviously, because she's meddling and overbearing and, you know, selfish. But I liked the way that they did it in this one. I thought that it made a lot of sense and it made it where you didn't have to deal with that element quite as much, which is just a frustration to me. And I was glad to skip it in this particular retelling. I also really enjoyed that Persephone or Persephone, I'm sorry, like I learned, I learned Persephone reading it myself was a woman of color and I just enjoyed the whole thing so, so much. Then I have Magic Shifts, which is Kate Daniels number eight by Alona Andrews. Kate Daniels is one of my all time favorite urban fantasy romance series. Alona Andrews is a husband and wife author duo who I really enjoy. I have enjoyed every single one of their books that I've read, which is many. <laughs> So Kate Daniels is a mercenary and she's a mercenary who purposely is not drawing too much attention to herself by being too good or too bad to not get the job done. She's just good enough to be adequate at what she does. And she has a romance with Curran who is the Beast Lord. He is a lion shifter and is in charge of thousands of shifters in the Atlanta area. In this world you have magic and tech so when there is a magic wave technology doesn't work and then when the magic wave dives down technology works again and things are unstable and you never know when a new creature will pop out at you. So there are often a mystery or a missing person or something that she is trying to solve while also there are the political aspects and her romance with Curran. The romance does take off more in the third and fourth books than at the very beginning but they meet at the beginning and they have interactions and they have funny banter and 
While this series is not as focused on the couple and the romance as I usually like, it is so well done and I really, really, really enjoy it. And there are 10 books in the series. I'm currently, when I'm filming this, reading the ninth book and I do hope to finish the series in no later than July. <laughs> It's really just excellent. If you have not given Alona Andrews a try yet, I would highly recommend them if you like urban fantasy romance. Then I have The Iron Duke, which is The Iron Sea is number one by Mel Jean Brooks. This is a pen name for Mila Vane, who wrote A Heart of Blood and Ashes, which is one of my favorite books of the year so far. This is a steampunk parallel timeline retelling of the Mongolian horde and a historical romance in England. So the Mongolian horde unleashed zombies somehow and they also kind of overtook the world using nanobot technology. <laughs> because of this they were able to control people, especially their emotions, and they had overtaken all of Europe. The Iron Duke was a pirate and he actually saved them. He marched up to the tower and destroyed it. That was putting out the frequencies that controlled the people with the nanotech, which they had by accident. And because of that, he's made into a duke and he is very alpha. <laughs> he's definitely an alpha hole and she is an inspector. Now, the horde could use the nanobot technology to produce a mating frenzy and that was how she was conceived. So her mother was part of the frenzy. She is half Asian, an unknown Mongolian horde member sired her and this is a big part of the storyline there is heavy racism against Asians in this book because the Mongolians were the conquerors if you will and the dictators so even though she was just as much a victim as everybody else she is faced with a lot of violence and hatred because of her Asian features so that you should be aware of that before you read the book if that is not something that you want at this time understandable but it is pretty heavily in the book there are other prejudices as well including prejudice against people who have the nanotech technology and those who don't and there's just a lot of things with it so a dead body is dropped on the iron duke's doorstep and she's called to investigate it that is how their paths cross and he is fascinated by her and she wants nothing to do with him there is not great consent in this book it is definitely questionable and dubious and he makes mistakes because he's not listening to her no so you should be aware of that, but it was a very interesting world. I really enjoyed their dynamics. I loved their banter and really cared for the side characters as well. Just a very, very interesting book. And even though they didn't say I love you until like the very last page, which is not my thing at all whatsoever, I still really liked this book. And I thought that the writing was interesting and I don't know, just a fun world. By fun, I mean zombie apocalypse, you know, Bot technology wasteland? I don't know. <laughs> and then lastly, I have Stolen, which is Tribes number two by Milana Jax. I recommend reading the series in order, but it is an alpha alien romance series. They are tribesmen. They have very particular uh, traditions. <laughs> they don't have any females. Their females are either dead or sterile. And some human women have crash landed on the planet. Each human woman is crash landing randomly and individually. So it's not one group, it's individual women who have crash landed at different points. And they have a huge competition and games and it's like a three day thing. And that's how you win the right to mate the female. They also have a thing where you're not supposed to mate them where they can't mate with anybody else, but it's an instinct. So. Uh, that's kind of looked down upon if you keep the mate for yourself. It is wild, over the top, crazy, alpha, just weird stuff is happening. Yeah, there's just a lot of weirdness. <laughs> I think there's several things in the second book that you need the first book's context for to understand what they're talking about or to find it for it to make sense. So I definitely recommend reading it in order. But in this particular one, he is joining the enemies games for the prize. The human female is going to steal her from the competition. So it's very interesting. The males specifically believe that they are their goddesses incarnated. And um, they're like, we're just from Earth. And they're like, okay, goddess. And there are things with the goddesses that are happening that the humans can't explain away. And it's very interesting. 
over the top. If you're not already into over the top alpha alien romances, this is probably not the one to start with. Ice Planet Barbarians is probably the one to start with. But if you're already into that weird and wacky dynamic, <laughs> this one is just so entertaining. Like that's just what it is. It's just entertaining and candy and just kind of a palate cleanser because it's weird. <laughs> So I'd love to know what you think about it if you decided to pick it up. Let me know what the best book that you read in May was. Also tell me if you've read any of these or other books in their series or other books by the authors, whatever. Always up for talking about books. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.